Boys and girls, welcome back. This is Boonjabin Bok. I bring you another F1 23 ranked online video. Today we have three races for you. This first one was from the last week, last week's uh, races. We were the final uh, driver in the Silver 2 uh, division. And I wanted to make sure that we stayed in Silver 2. So we just jumped on for one last race towards the end of Sunday evening to make sure that we didn't get kicked out. So so long as we get a decent race here, we should be promoted a few spots and ensure that we stay in Silver 2. So we were at Baku. We qualified on pole. And you all know I don't really have great race starts. I don't know if maybe people just have traction control on and they can get better race starts. Or maybe if I just don't have this down quite yet. But a uh, short run to turn one at Baku and there's always somebody diving down the inside from like p10 so we go a little bit wide just to make sure that nobody dives down the inside a little bit of contact there from the guys behind us uh we do lose a position here i decided not to fight it too hard i'll just let him by but of course the guy behind us just dives into uh, the corner behind him and we lose two more positions so the driver behind us right now uh instead of paying attention to what's going on down the, the track, is just focused on what's happening two feet in front of his car. So obviously there are cars in front of us fighting. They're going in side by side. So I'm having to break a little bit earlier to make sure we don't get caught up in anything. And we just get rear-ended because um, the guy behind us just decided, I'll just break at the normal braking zone as if there's nobody in front of us. So we get taken out. We got rear wing damage. Um, uh, you'll see there will be like a light yellow uh, on our on our MFD. I don't know if you'll be able to tell in 1080p, but it is a slight. It's it's a, it's a little lighter green than the rest of the car. Uh, but uh, we have one car DNF starting into the castle section, and then we have one more car DNF in the middle of the castle section. So that helps us out, uh, gives us two positions back. We were down to P7, but now we are back up to P5. The leader is about four to five seconds in front of this group of three in front of us. And I, I think we're still in a pretty good spot here because we qualified pretty well. I think we were about a half second faster than everybody else. And you can see somebody's front wing coming off, pretty much all of his front wing coming off right there. So we know one more driver will be giving up a position in a little bit when he jumps into the pit lane. So we will shortly be in P4 and uh, we won't have to worry too much. We'll only have to overtake two more cars and then we should be able to close up on the leader. <laughs> coming out of the chicane there, there was uh, a little bit of contact. I didn't want to rush through because uh, in case like that sometimes people will just um, swing the car all the way across the track for no goddamn reason and destroy my car so um, I decided to take it easy and I, uh, I, s I s believe this guy is trying to give the position back uh, but he just slowed down too much to the point where we passed him but that's fine we got taken out of um, the first lap anyway so I don't feel bad about taking that position back so we are up to p3 now uh, this driver in front of us is uh, a little bit laggy I don't know who's to blame here although um, EA and Cody's uh, online hosting is, a, is an issue in every race so probably nobody to blame here really so we're just gonna have to follow behind this guy and, and, and take it really slow because he's not really driving all that well as you can see not really great exits there um, we're six seconds to p1 right now we're only on lap two i'm not too worried i think we can claw this all back now coming out of this chicane here he hits the wall again so i'm like crap we're gonna be losing so much time behind this guy but uh, i don't want to hit him so we have to break super early there and somehow he almost hits the wall <laughs> again. Just seems like he's driving on ice, and I think that's because the uh, tire pressures on the time trial setup uh, are not really uh, efficient for the race. So as you can see, every time we're on a straight, our front uh, tires, the surface uh, turns blue. As you can see, they're, they're in the lower 60s. So I think we need to up the tire pressures a little bit, and I think everybody else, uh, for the most part, judging by their, their, their driving, they're probably just using time trial setups as well, as I don't think they probably have the knowledge to really adjust their setups but um, I, I just went in and uh, downloaded the latest time child setup and used that for the race so as you can see there in that previous left hand corner uh, the driver in front of us didn't really have a great exit we just turn on the overtake DRS isn't enabled yet so I'm hoping we can use the next lap to pull away and 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 going by how he was driving before probably shouldn't be too difficult as he was literally um, getting overstare or hitting a wall in every single corner. So uh, we move back up into P2. We get the fastest lap as well. Still working with this damaged rear wing. It kind of made the car feel really unstable uh, and throw the, the lower tire lower tire pressures on top of that the car just did not feel good this entire race at all i think in the future i'll have to raise the tire temps a little bit at least in the front uh, as you can see they're kind of hitting the the blue levels of temperature whereas the tires in the back 
um, they're actually they were actually at a, a really good temp so uh, probably raise the pressure on the front tires by two or three clicks next time we're racing at Baku uh, but when we got out into p2 there the the gap to p1 was about seven seconds so it was only about 6.9 seconds and as you can see um, it didn't take us that long we we lowered the gap to like four seconds later on in that lap and now we cut ahead and we've caught up to um, p1 as he goes into the pit lane now i decided to stay out just because uh, i wanted to pressure him into possibly making a mistake on his outlap he'll be on the medium tires they're a little bit slower he'll be on cold tires he'll probably be wanting to push to make sure that he gets out in front of us to get a good undercut so i decided um, let's go out for one more lap see if we can uh, close that gap up threaten him a little bit and see if he can uh, see if he will make a mistake on his outlap and uh, hand us the position but as you can see now uh, the tires are pretty much gone we get a, a, a moment on that left hand corner there and the car just doesn't want to stick uh, even that little short straight there the tire temps dropped all the way down to down to 62 degrees again so they're they're blue going into these corners and i just cannot get any turn in on the car right now because the damaged rear wing and the uh the low temperatures in the tires so no grip in these tires whatsoever and it felt like i was driving on ice on this lap but we do all enough to keep out of the barriers we're really close to hitting the barrier there in the castle section and we're just looking to push so we have a 17 second gap to net p1 uh pitter 96 in p3 and we have a 12 second gap to the guy p, uh, who's currently in p2 right now so not too worried about the threat from behind there is no threat from behind at this point we are racing um, the driver in P3 for the lead of the race and uh, by the time we come around this left hander here we are just still at about 16 and 0.8 seconds so we didn't really um, gain much time at all uh, in fact I think we lost no, I don't think I'd say we lost time I think we're pretty much at about the same gap so we didn't really gain or lose time on that extra lap there so we come in for our pit stop and the driver in net p1 is just going through the final left right turn uh complex right now and he's coming down the straight so uh it'll be interested i was interested to see how uh, far back we were going to be when we came out of the pit lane so driver behind comes in as well it releases the net leader out in front and he's just rounding the left hand corner of turn one right now and he just about gets ahead of us again but as you can see right now his light is blinking we only have about 20 percent ourselves but um he just crossed the finish line and he's already blinking meaning he's under 10 percent he's probably at zero as he was probably pushing to uh, try and regain the lead but uh we just followed along on that first uh lap out of the pit lane and we pretty much caught him up as the drs starts so we have drs and we have a little bit of battery though we don't use any battery after the drs and we just get right out in front of him the uh, straight is so long that we managed to gap him by about four tenths just uh on that straight alone so i know that he doesn't have any battery in his car we only have about 12 percent as well but he will be getting drs down this straight i think we had a little bit lower down for us uh, because it seemed like we were even without using much overtake he had DRS and he wasn't um, really catching up to us. So all we really had to do now was uh, drop him in sector two or the rest of sector one here and then all of sector two, which is pretty much all the slow corners at Azerbaijan and, and hope to God that we can drop him from DRS because we still have that damaged rear wing and um, we can't really afford to make any mistakes here and allow him to sit within uh, DRS because there's a possibility that he might still be able to catch up to us. But as we come into the castle section here, uh, just looking at the rear view mirror, he's not really getting the greatest of exits through every corner. We actually have a pretty decent castle section here and he just drops a bunch of times. So he must have made a mistake because he is 1.3 seconds behind at this point. And that was uh, the closest he would ever get because now we move up to the final lap and we have extended the gap to about six seconds. So not too bad considering we didn't have optimal tire pressures and we damaged our rear wing on lap one. We were able to catch back up to him and then eventually overtake him as well. So uh, Baku is one of those tracks where you can't really corner cut because there's a barrier everywhere. I suppose there's one corner right before the castle section that you can cut a little bit, but uh, the curb's so high that it, it um, destabilizes the car and actually loses you time if you don't do it properly. So uh, 
I, this was probably the most enjoyable race out of last week because I think we had a couple races at Mexico where people were just cutting corners constantly and uh, that wasn't fun. Uh, and you'll see um, there's the this week's tracks actually have uh, quite a few places where people can cut corners. So um, enjoy it while it lasts a race that doesn't have too many people cutting corners and, and track extending. So um, by the time we get through the sector two here, the gap went from like six seconds to like 11 seconds. So I don't know if he made a huge mistake somewhere or if maybe desync was just uh, screwing up the game because the gap was at about six seconds when we started the lap and we've doubled that gap. Uh, we've doubled the gap to about almost 12 seconds by this point. So he was probably just pushing really hard to try and um, catch up and, and uh, lower that gap as much as he could. But by the time we come down the straight now, we're already 12 seconds ahead. So, uh, yeah, pretty pretty easy victory once we uh, caught up to P1. So a little bit of a, a couple issues on that first lap that dropped us down to P7, but it wasn't too difficult to catch back up and eventually take the lead. So uh, another win for us, and it secured our um, Silver 2 division for another week. So second race of the video and first race of this week, we are at Coda and we qualified on pole once again, um, starting in P1 here. And you'll see the, the quality of racing drops a little bit. I mean, not like the, the quality was all that great in the first race, but uh, I'm gonna go a little bit wide into turn one because I know how everybody loves to dive it down the inside. And as you can see, there will be a little bit of contact, cars kind of being spun around, so. Um, I hate that you have to compromise your line just because somebody in P10 is just going to dive down the inside of everybody, but that's fine. We lose one position here, and uh, I don't think you'll see it too much on this first lap. Actually, yeah, you do if you looked in the mirror there. I don't understand this. This is just getting this is just getting stupid at this point. Uh, the amount of corner cutting and, and track extension uh, is just ridiculous. Especially at a track like this where you can save so much time cutting corners. Um, so we are on the back straight now. Using a little bit of battery to try and maintain the gap. Uh, I think I might have had too, too much downforce on the car. Uh, judging by the straight line speed. The, the difference in straight line speeds uh, with the cars around us. I had a, a time trial setup which had higher downforce. And then a race setup that I had adjusted with a couple clicks lower on the wings. And I think I might have just accidentally um, used the time trial setup for quality and race. So you'll see we just do not have a uh, good straight line speed in this race. So uh, we're still in P2 at the end of lap one here. And as we come around the penultimate corner, the driver in P1 makes a mistake and I was expecting him to swing back across the track and hit us. So I had to compromise our corner a little bit because I didn't want to get taken out, which I. I'm, I'm glad I did because it, it looked like he had come back really close to us. So he's going to get the uh, run down the inside again. And of course, I'm going to have to go wide because the driver behind is just going to dive it down the inside anyway for some reason from like three car lengths back. Uh, but we still managed to keep P2 here. And yeah, just I guess keep an eye on the cars uh, behind. I don't know how you get such a bad line through there and still manage to stick so close behind us. So we get a little bit of dirty air here and can't manage to make that right hand turn. So we lose a little bit of time. Driver behind gets a really good run. He gets by us or will eventually get by us. I did just use a little bit of battery, but then I thought he's just going to dive it down the inside anyway. So I might as well just let him go and um, try and get a, a better line for ourselves through there. So we do lose a position coming down the back straight here using a little bit of bat a little bit of battery to try and maintain um, the distance to the cars ahead. And you can see here, we just do not have straight line speed. So um, we're going to use the guys ahead to kind of block the car behind to make sure that he doesn't get by us, which kind of works through that left hand turn. We take this corner poorly and we go a little bit deep, which allows him to get back on our gearbox. But we do have the inside for this left hand turn. And luckily for us, he backs out of it. So, um, but he gets a better exit here. And we're going to have to concede this position because we just um, don't have any straight line speed. So we're down to P4 at this point. But the leaders aren't really getting away because um, we're gaining on them through the corners, but they're extending on the straights. So 
Uh, we'll just have to sit here for a little bit currently in P4. I figured I'll go a little bit early on um, pit strategy and try to use that to overtake. We managed to get back out into P3, uh, overtaking the driver behind us who made a mistake. Uh, I believe it was at this corner on the last lap. Look how much this guy court cuts this corner uh, to try and fight through that um, left-hand corner. So the drivers in front of us are fighting again. We have really terrible connection. And uh, he starts lagging out. He starts getting the red X and then starts like ghosting back at us like that. And I was like, what the hell at this point? I don't know what the hell is going on. So uh, I'm going to have to go a little bit slower. He jumps back <laughs> a couple of feet in front of us again. And then in this left hand turn, he just like stops right on the apex and damages our front wing. And then we try to go into the pit lane. But then this guy is trying to make it down the inside. <sighs> and, uh, man. It's... Yeah, this game is kind of a joke sometimes. So we get a damaged front wing. I didn't even get a chance to have them fix it. So we emerge again with a damaged front wing. I think this race should have been an easy win for us. Uh, even being stuck behind all that slow traffic, the leader was literally like one second in front of us. And if we hadn't run into that lag spike or I don't know what the hell he was doing on, that, uh, on the apex there on that left-hand turn, uh, we we would have won this race easily. Uh, I mean, look at this. We, with a damaged front wing, we still managed to only lose by five seconds to the guy in P2. Uh, well, it'll be a little bit more by the end of the race. And it took this guy the entire race to catch up to us with a damaged front wing. So it was like a, it wasn't an orange front wing, but it was a dark yellow front wing, which made us have to go one gear lower on every corner than um, we normally do to make sure that we can actually get some turn in on the car. So unfortunate for us there, uh, just a little mix of bad luck, uh, poor driving from myself and other drivers. And uh, yeah, I think if we hadn't had that front wing damage, I probably would have pitted like two two laps early and then we would have been gone. And I don't think the, the guys would have been able to catch up to us. but. Uh, because of that front wing damage, um, we lost a bunch of time. So, uh, yeah, like I said, only five seconds to the driver in front. And I believe P1 is only maybe eight seconds or so in front of him. We were losing so much time on every lap just because uh, the front wing damage didn't allow us to get any turn in. Uh, look how much oversteer we're getting. Here, third gear, right-hand turn, even on worn medium tires would have been a nice easy corner for us. Um, oh, and we also made a mistake at some point, which lost us like three seconds as well. So we probably would have finished in P3 had we not made that mistake. Uh, well, with the three-second penalty, we, we still would have finished P4, but we would have finished P3 on track. But uh, I made a mistake through the, the S section because of... Um, uh, just not lowering the gears enough, forgetting that I had wing damage and trying to take it in the same gear that I normally would with a, a working car. So finish P4, uh, not a great raid race, a lot of bad luck there. But uh, yeah, like I said, I think we would have easily won that race um, because of how long we carried that front wing damage. Not blaming anybody. Uh, when when the game is laggy like that, you need to really drive carefully. But I, I really don't understand. He just kind of like came to almost a dead stop on the apex there and i was expecting him to still be moving and <laughs> you know we slammed into the back of him so like i said um i'm not trying to take any blame away from me i should have been more careful there so on to the second race of the week third race of this video we qualified on pole at a wet miami and just take a look at the rear view mirror here we are clear in front of the driver in p2 we even go a little bit wide in this corner to make sure that we get through there cleanly but he goes into the back of us which unsettles his car and then kind of puts him in at a dead stop. And then the car is behind him and just kind of drove into him. So I, I think we did everything that we could there. Uh, we were well clear of him. We even went wide into the corner and he still hit us anyway. I don't think he did it on purpose or anything like that. I think it's a wet race. Nobody really knows the grip level yet. It was a dry qualifying. Um, so uh, I don't think we did anything wrong there. I'm not blaming him or anything. His race is destroyed. <laughs> so, um, uh, but yeah, I, I think we did all that we could to avoid contact there into that first corner. And I think it's the, uh, the drivers behind that uh, kind of screwed that up. But as we head into sector two, we're already two seconds ahead of everybody else. And um, yeah, this wasn't an, an, an interesting race as we have a moment 
at the end of that straight there. Uh, yeah, this was not a very interesting race whatsoever. Like I said, the gap is already two seconds. We've already got a seven second gap to the driver in P5. Um, these guys fought like hell for the first few laps and just <laughs> lost themselves so much time. They're all right next to each other. P3, P4, P5. They're all right, uh, they're like wing to wing, and I think they lost themselves a bunch of time on this first, uh, on the first few laps, just because they fought so hard. So, uh, as we come down to the end of this straight, we've got a three-second gap to the guy in P2, Boiler Dan. And that was pretty much it. That was the closest anybody was going to get to us in this race. Now, I'm not a really great driver in, in the wet. Uh, but we still managed to win and win by quite a bit. So as we come to the final lap here, I know this was just a race chock full of highlights. As we come to the final uh, lap here of the race, we've already got 31 seconds on P2, 34 seconds to P3 and over a minute to P4 with everybody else behind um, DNFing. So uh, I was trying to set the fastest lap for this final lap here just to see if I could do it. Got plenty of battery, um, but we had a moment through that first sector, and I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure that's pretty much it because we're still on the same set of inters. We didn't do uh, a pit stop at all, and the tires are pretty much dead at this point. So uh, again, I think... I think the next time we do a wet race at Miami, I'll have to up the tire pressures again uh, for this track as well because it seemed like the tires were hitting uh, blue levels at certain parts of the track. So, uh, yeah, and as you can see, we lose it <laughs> at the same spot, um, but we still have such a huge gap that it doesn't really matter at all. And then P4 DNFs on the last lap. That sucks because you're not getting any points for this race. You just did a 14 lap wet race at Miami, which probably took, I don't know, what is it, a minute 42 per lap times 14? <laughs> That's probably close to a 30 minute race and now you DNF'd on the last lap and you don't get any points for your uh, division rankings. So that kind of sucks to be that guy. Uh, but yeah, I would come around the penultimate corner, I believe this is the penultimate corner. Uh, no, this is the penultimate corner. Second to last one, and then the last one. Yeah, and we win by 32 seconds. So there you go, boys and girls. Two laps of one of the most boring races that I've ever done. But uh, it was enough to get us like 91 points for our division standing. So right now, I, I think at the end of the race, I was sitting in the gold promotion. Um, yeah, gold promotion level. Although by the, this time, this is already the next day, we probably dropped back down to silver two. So yeah. Uh, three of my most recent races, boys and girls. I know they weren't really all that exciting, and uh, we had a bunch of bad luck in the uh, first and second race. Managed to overcome it in the first race, but we didn't uh, didn't have the same experience in the second race. So there you go. If you guys enjoyed it, feel free to leave a like, comment, or subscribe. Stay tuned for more. Remember to eat bok choy, and I'll see you guys in the next one.